This is Michael Woodward, and this is Season 2, Episode 91 of the Jumble Thing Podcast. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast, where we interview leading entrepreneurs about their journey of turning dreams and ideas into reality. Along the way, they'll share some tips on how you can turn your own dreams into reality too. Our guest on today's episode is Ruby Freeman. More about Ruby in a moment. Before we get rolling, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the Jumble Think Podcast. If you like listening on iTunes, go to jumblethink.com slash iTunes. And for Spotify, jumblethink.com slash Spotify. It will take you right to the app, right where you can click subscribe. And of course, you can find us wherever you like to listen to podcasts. So head on over and subscribe to the Jumble Think Podcast. Now let's jump into today's episode. Hey there, welcome to the Jumble Think Podcast. My name is Michael Woodward. I am your host. We have an incredible episode lined up for you today. Before we get rolling... I want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, Floxy and OpportunityInChina.com. Here's a little bit more about our friends over at Floxy. Floxy is your unlimited graphic design, web development, and copywriting team. It's time to stop thinking about those ideas. The next killer graphic, the next perfect website, the perfect copy for your ads, and start getting them created. Their plans start at $349 a month. No hidden fees, month-to-month billing, and you can cancel at any time. So for all of your web development, copywriting, and graphic designs, make sure you check out Floxy at floxy.com. That's F-L-O-C-K-S-Y dot com. And now here is a little bit more about our friends over at opportunityinchina.com. At the dawn of the 19th century, forward-thinking people moved to the commercial centers of Europe. Moving into the 20th century, America welcomed millions into the land of freedom and opportunity. It is now the 21st century. Many of the successes and fortunes of our generations will be made in China. To learn how you can seize opportunity in China, follow the Opportunity in China podcast. The Opportunity in China podcast is available anywhere podcasts are streamed. Or you can visit our website at opportunityinchina.com. I am so excited about today's guest. Her name is Ruby Freeman. We met at New Media Summit a few months ago, and in the last few weeks, we've gotten to know each other a little bit better. I'm excited to have her on. I think she's going to really encourage you in today's episode. Ruby is a life and influence coach working with a new generation of thought leaders. As a top breakthrough coach for purpose-driven leaders who are ready to bring their big mission to the spotlight, her approach ignites true transformation while flipping fear into actualized ambition and doubt into absolute confidence. Ruby works with leaders from artists to entrepreneurs who are ready to rise above their limitations and amplify their message. Coaching over 100 clients, she is a catalyst for change and is hugely successful in helping her clients embody radical resilience and an unstoppable mentality. Named an inspirational woman by the Huffington Post and creator of the three-day leadership training intensive, Amplified Soul Live, Ruby's bold, no-nonsense approach helps leaders rise up to fulfill their mission and make their voices heard. You can learn more about Ruby at rubyframan.com or follow her online at I am Ruby. Ruby, how are you doing today? I'm doing awesome, and I'm super excited to be here. Now, I, I got to sit down with you and a few others and talk about your story a little bit over dinner one of the nights at New Media Summit. It was incredible. So I just want our listeners to get to know you a little bit and and your story because it is a, a story of transformation and change and choices and it's super powerful. So share a little bit about your journey of discovering your voice. Yeah. So my entire life, I struggled with feeling misunderstood. And in my preteen years is, I mean, around the age of 10 or 11, that's the earliest I remember experiencing anxiety wow. in my body. Um, now that I know what it is, and I recognize what it is, but that was the earliest that it, it crept in. And At that time, I mean, this is like the 80s. No one was really talking about mental illness. Anxiety wasn't a thing that was addressed. And so my family did the best that they could with what they knew. But really, I was labeled as moody, you know, because I would have these explosive types of reactions or um, 
isolate or have a full on panic attack. And it, it, to others who aren't familiar with what this is, it looked like, oh, she's just having another breakdown or she's just being moody. And, um, when you, when you feel the impact of, of those words on top of being really confused as to what is going on in your body and in your mind, um, it just made me feel so deeply misunderstood. And I carried this feeling into adulthood. Wow. I got married really young. I was 20. And, um, at that point in my life is when I was finally diagnosed, um, with an array of things. So I was diagnosed with clinical depression, with anxiety disorder, with rheumatoid arthritis, with fibromyalgia and with PTSD, um, because everything had just continued to impact and, and over the years it just compounded and I'd reached that place in my early twenties where there were some days I physically could not move out of wow. bed. My fibromyalgia was wow. so out of control. And so I was put on, um, a concoction of prescription medications. And I, I believe there was about five different ones that I was put on. And during that time I got addicted to benzos. It was just too easy. It was like, wow, these, this is the first thing that I put into my body that would just make all the feelings disappear. And wow. I got really hooked on that feeling when you're young, when you've been dealing with this for over a decade to have this level of relief is, is highly addictive. So that is when my addictions began. It began with the benzos. Uh, I shortly after that, about five years left my first marriage and really was, I found myself kind of out there in the world alone for the first time, not living with my family, not being married. And that's when I started going out a lot and experimenting and, um, feeling like I needed to express myself for the first time, but also not knowing what that looked like. And so it was just the best recipe for deepening my addiction. So now I went from prescription drugs and alcohol to alcohol and recreational drugs. And that really became my life for a solid eight years. Nights blurred into days, days blurred into nights. I worked in the nightclub industry. I, I was a promoter and marketing manager. I put on, uh, produced giant raves and I just didn't know I had a problem because everyone around me was doing drugs. In fact, drugs were just given to me. It yeah. was so easy. Yeah. Um, so I got hooked and I didn't even know. I didn't even know I was an addict. I didn't know I had a problem. All I knew is for once in my life, I feel like I found my community. Uh, for once in my life, I feel like people like me. For once in my life, I feel like I'm seen. And of course, all of that was false. It was because I was a promoter. Everyone wants to be your friend. Um, and addicts attract addicts, but it felt real to me at that time. And I ended up being, um, getting into another relationship all this time. I was dating all the wrong men and yeah. I got into another long-term relationship, which was about four and a half years. And that entire relationship was probably the most toxic I'd ever entered in my life. And my sense of worthiness was completely shot. And I just put up with a lot that, um, you know, the, the woman I am today would never even yeah. put up with. Yeah. And it was a very manipulative, narcissistic, um, abusive, emotionally abusive, verbally abusive relationship filled with infidelity. And when that world came crashing down on me, when I could no longer deny what was actually going on, um, I ended that relationship and that was 2012. And I found myself in that same place. And I know like some of our listeners can relate to this is like, we find ourselves in these places where we ask the question, why me? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and I found myself in that place again. And it's, it was a very familiar place because I'd been there, what felt like my entire life, this rock bottom, why me space. But at that point in my life in 2012, when I found myself crying, heaving on the floor saying, why me? I had this different experience of almost witnessing myself asking it and then following up with the question, well, how did I create this? Yeah. 
you know, because these bad things that quote unquote happen to us, if they're happening to us repeatedly, there's only one common denominator and that is us, <laughs> so true. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it was like really being able to look in the mirror and saying it's an accumulation of my choices of my decisions, of my actions that have led me here today. So 2012 really marked the year of ownership for me. And I started on this journey of improving my life and teaching myself how to feel worthy and how to love myself and how to feel good as the woman that I, I was. Um, and so much of that, it wasn't easy. It's not like I went from that day to, to who I am today. It was a real roller coaster ride. And through that, I, I um, challenged my my addiction by wanting to go sober, and um, it was hard, you know, because I didn't seek help with it. I was too ashamed of of sharing with people like I had a problem, and so instead of maybe partying five nights a week and and um, doing drugs and alcohol five nights a week, I went to maybe three nights a week, yeah, and yeah. but then I would binge. And I remember this one night at the end of 2012, I found myself at an after hours and I was super high and I fainted and I hit the cement floor head first, ended up with a major concussion. Yeah. Um, and the concussion was followed by a post concussion syndrome, which is when you have a concussion for longer than a few days. And mine yeah. was, was two months. Wow. And during that time, I slipped into a manic depressive state. Um, I mean, basically, concussions rewire your entire yeah. nervous system and your brain. And so it, it's almost like you have no control over anything. And so I didn't have control over what I was saying. I, I was crying un, uncontrollably. Like I was taken on, uh, put on leave from my work. I was in tremendous pain, physical and I basically had to lock myself in my apartment with the curtains drawn and no sound. And, you know, that would drive anyone insane. They then discovered I had nerve damage in my brain, which was a lot of the pain that I was feeling was from the nerves. So I was put on a the right medication. And while I was on that medication, I couldn't drink. I couldn't do drugs. I mean, it was like forced sobriety. And yeah. I remember waking up one day and finally feeling like the fog was lifting. Wow. Wow. And I was like, okay, yeah, I, I'm making a decision. I'm making a decision to create a different life for myself. Yeah. And I didn't fully know what that life was, but I knew the feeling yeah. and I wanted to follow the feeling and the feeling was happiness, joy, and fulfillment. Yeah. And for me, that was enough. That was enough for me to follow. Like you don't have to have the full vision. You just have to have a feeling, something that you're going to run towards. Yeah. And for me, it was the happiness, the joy, the fulfillment. And, you know, that's really what started this journey into coaching. Cause I started sharing my story online and realized there's power in, in being authentic and transparent the mm -hmm. way in, I, I had no, I was very unapologetic about what I was going <laughs> through. I was sharing, yeah. um, almost oversharing and I would get so many private messages from people saying, wow, wow. like uh, some of the famous DJs that I'd worked with wow. would, would message me saying, wow, I'm going through the same thing. Thank wow. you for sharing. And yeah. that's when I knew this is, this is what I'm meant to do. This wow. is, it feels good. It feels like my life has purpose. So I went, to school, became a certified life coach, became an NLP practitioner, really dove in headfirst into the personal development industry because I was fascinated at this point, absolutely fascinated that I could take this life that I thought was so hard and tough and I was a victim of my circumstances and flip it around, you know, on my own. And I was so fascinated with the, this idea, this notion that we can all do that. We have access to that. We just have to learn to harness that access. And I wanted to show that to other people. And so became a coach, started coaching and my coaching business has since transformed and evolved as I've evolved. And, and now I choose to work with thought leaders, people who I see as, as the new generation of thought leaders, because if I can help guide other leaders to live their purpose and to feel as though they have a voice to share their message, then we can only achieve 
something that, that I call the greater good, like we can then move the collective consciousness forward because it takes so much more than just one person. So if I can ignite an army of voices to speak their truth, to speak their message, then that to me feels like my purpose. That's so, so cool. And we live in a society today who uh, so many are choosing to say, why me? Or mm. I am the victim and it's everyone else's fault or I'm putting this on you. And I've become a big fan of, of this whole idea of, no, you get to choose the story you write for yourself. There mm -hmm. are going to be situations that come along that are outside of your control, but you can make the choice to decide on how you're going to respond to that story. And I love, I mean, hearing you at New Media Summit, talking to you, getting to know you, I would have never thought that you were a person that that struggled with finding identity and finding a voice and finding certainty because of the certainty you walk in today and because of the voice that you say, hey, I, I know this is who I am and I know that mm -hmm. this is the value I bring and I know that this is the voice in which I speak. And so hearing the story of where you've come from and where you are today and knowing you today it's hard to imagine a person that isn't like that because because you are are so passionate about the things you believe in. You are so uh, communicative about uh, having a voice and, and creating your voice and creating your own victory story. So tell us a little bit about today. You're, you're an entrepreneur because you've uh, seen the change in your life and now you want to impact thought leaders to bring uh, a clarity to their voice and, and amplify it. You even use that in your title, Amplified mm -hmm. Soul, for your event. And and so tell us about that place where you, uh, for lack of a, a better word, you, you kind of got fed up with the status quo and said, no, this isn't just for me. This is for others, and others need to live in a place of their own identity, their own voice, and be able to share messages that matter with the world. Yeah, it's it's really interesting because when I first started coaching, um, which was back in 2014 when I built this business, I mean, when you're a trained life coach, you can coach anyone. It's like a doctor can treat anyone. So yeah, I was yeah. really working a lot with um, with a, a full range of people, mostly on the topic of, of worthiness mm. and confidence um, because I've always had a passion for that. Can and, we pause there for a second? Yeah. Uh, you know, you, you keep on using this word worthy, worthiness. Yes. Uh, and I think it's really important that we talk about that for a moment because I think yeah. it's a great foundation. So share with us a little bit about what worthiness is and what a value of worth comes from, where it comes from, and, and how you can really define it for yourself. Yeah, great question. Um, so your sense of worth is, is literally like what it sounds like. What are you worth in the world? What is your place? Yeah. And, and how this translates is like, who am I in this world? What do I have to offer? What yeah. do I have that's of value? Um, am I, am I, are people actually going to support me? Are people actually mm. going to love me? I mean, it's that sense of self. And when that sense of self gets damaged, which for most human beings, this happens and this happens through our upbringing because we are challenged in so many different ways, whether it's our parents or our loved ones or our teachers or society or the, co you know, the combination of all those things, we are influenced to pick up these different programs. For example, yeah. um, say you have really your parents, like for me, getting A's was like a big deal. Yeah. And if you didn't get an A, it wasn't good enough. Wow. And, and it's like, it's not that, that's necessarily bad parenting in their eyes. It's good parenting because yeah. they only want the best for you. Yeah. And, and your parents are coming from a place of, of what they know, yeah. you know, that that's what they know to be true. But the way it impacts the child is if I don't do this, then I'm not good enough. Yeah. So if I get a B, I'm not good enough. And so there, the program has now been planted. So the program is now planted in your subconscious that if I don't get this perfect something, I am not good enough. And wow. as you go through life, you start to unconsciously seek out evidence to prove that little seed to be correct. So yeah. now all of a sudden you're looking at all these different examples in your life that um, really align with the belief that I'm not good enough. So wow. like, oh, you got yeah. picked last on the sports team. I'm not good enough. Uh, you didn't get invited to this birthday party. I'm not good enough. Like, and this just continues to 
impound and all of a sudden you're a full-fledged adult and this program this belief is now running your life and yeah. you have no idea if you're if you're not aware of it if you're not unaware that you if you're not aware that you have this um worthiness wound then you're going to continue to make choices and decisions that will prove that that sense of worth to be correct. So you're going to choose the wrong person to date. You're going to choose situations that um, are going to be way below standard. You're going to settle for a lot less. And and this is all from our unconscious. So like the first step to, to really working on your sense of worth is to acknowledge where mm. is that at right now? Like yeah. how, yeah. how do you feel about yourself? How yeah. worthy are you? And once you are aware of that, it becomes easier to start to unpack and, and work on. Well, and I think I want to follow up with that because you, you, you mentioned right there about knowing where you're currently at. It seems like it's a journey that you never truly arrive at. It's a, a no. process that you're constantly, and you could have areas in which you go, I, I know my value. I know my voice. I know uh, what's important to me. I know the true belief systems. But then you could have areas that are completely polar opposite where you have no value. Whether, I mean, it could be uh, in the business world, you understand your worth and value, but in your personal life and dating, you don't. Or, uh, that kind of thing. So this evolution of growing and understanding worth, uh, it's it, it, it seems like it takes a lot of awareness and intentional action to be in a process of, in a lot of ways, healing uh, mm -hmm. through the process. So tell us a little bit about that and how you move from um, uh, story to story or issue to issue or grow in this and constantly evolve into a, a, a person that understands self value, self worth. Yeah. Um, so I'll start by sharing a love punch, which is nothing changes if, if you refuse to change. And love punch, love punches are, uh, you share them on posts and different things like that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's ba it, these are basically like, uh, you know, Rubyisms. My quotes, they're loving, but they're going to punch you into the, <laughs> in the gut with some truth. <laughs> Love that. But like, I mean, nothing changes if you're, you refuse to change. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. So many people get really comfortable playing a victim of their circumstances. Like, oh, this is because it is, or let's point the finger at everyone but ourselves. And so the idea of awareness is really, it stems from the idea of ownership. And, um, you know, the moment you take ownership is the moment you gain the power to create change wow. until you take ownership, you have no power. Yeah. So what that looks like in play is, Oh, I'm going to blame my parents for, for this. Yeah. Okay, cool. So now you've basically given your parents all this power all this power and, and you're powerless, you know, or someone saying, well, I'm going to blame the person who hurt me in my past. Okay, cool. We can acknowledge that they hurt you. That's very real. But let's also acknowledge the fact that right now you're giving them all your power by making that statement. Mm. Because in this moment, you have a choice. How do you choose to move on? And that is a very powerful choice. And, and people who say they feel powerless, it's because you're pointing the finger and blaming your circumstances. It's because yeah. you're rendering yourself powerless. Yeah. You're giving so really, it away. Yes. Yeah. And so really open your eyes and be willing to take ownership because until you take ownership, you will not have the power to create any change. Yeah. And so ownership really starts with awareness is, is being willing to see being willing to to see your blind spots, being willing to see all the ways in which you are holding yourself back or you are getting in your own way. Yeah. And and that takes courage and that takes bravery yeah. and you know, and and no one can do that for you. I mean, we've probably we've probably all everyone listening has experienced a time in their <laughs> life where someone's like tried to literally shake you by the shoulder saying, "Don't you see like this yeah. person's a bad person to date or don't you see this is a bad situation?" And we don't see it because we're not willing to see it. Yeah. So this isn't about someone, you know, coaches can guide you. I do this work with my clients all the time, but it begins with you being willing to see. Yeah, I love that. I, I, you know, in the business space, talking to business owners, entrepreneurs, for me, the place I hear it often is understanding the value you bring to the table and, mm. and the pricing that you even use. Like, hey, you know, I just really want to get this project, so I'm going to discount it. And you're discrediting your value. And I've found for me, every time I've made that uh, choice to 
concede on price or something like that, that the project doesn't go as smoothly because I've discredited my value in their eyes. Uh, and so for me, it's just like even, you know, there's a guy that I know that says never discount anything because it mm -hmm. devalues your worth. And I think that's a powerful statement. On the flip side, um, it, you know, you have a, a self deprecating, I'm going to put myself down because of my worth value. But on the, the other side, I see people that, that move into a place of arrogance or false confidence. Uh, and it's also a worth issue. So can you talk a little bit about that and the overcompensation uh, and that space when it comes to worth? Yeah. So that, that false confidence comes from a place of, of needing to feel safe. Mm. Um, so people will put up walls and wear masks to appear as, as being confident when they're really not because they feel, they believe that if I show up, if I show up real, if I show up transparent and, and just as I am and I don't feel worthy, then I'm going to be seen as a fraud and I'm going to be seen as this and I'm going to be seen as that. And I'm not going to be safe. And so they, it makes them feel as though they're losing their sense of security yeah. and these walls make them feel super safe. The walls also prevent them from really taking ownership. Wow. Right. Of, wow. of the things that they're doing. I mean, so many, Oh God, that like uh, most of my clients are entrepreneurs and I see this so much. It's like, just break down the walls and be willing to see all the ways in which you're holding yourself back and also recognize that these walls that you've put up, this false confidence is in fact a, a, a perfect example of the way in which you're refusing to take ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, let me just cover this up and let me pretend like everything's okay. And, that energy bleeds into everything that you do. That energy bleeds into your work and, and you wonder why you can't attract clients or you can't make sales. Well, it, this is why, uh, if we talk a, about it in terms of energy, like we all experience that gut feeling, you yeah. know, when, when yeah. someone's not being real or when something just seems a little off. And so when someone comes in with false, uh, confidence, we can feel that. And that doesn't make you want to do business with them. Right. What makes you want to do business with someone is if you know that this person is is real, like yeah, here's yeah. a real human being. They they get it. I I, I like this. This feels safe. <laughs> it feels comfortable. Right. right. And so it's it's funny because these fault the, these people who are walking around with these false masks of confidence. They feel like they're keeping themselves safe, but they're making those around them feel unsafe. We're both 80s kids, 90s kids, mm -hmm. and uh, we probably both remember a time where internet, definitely social media, uh, and technology played a less of a part of our, our communication lifestyle, our, our connection with each other. And uh, not everyone, especially the next generation of thought leaders, has that experience. How can we balance authenticity and uh, true worthiness in a place uh, like w when do we cross that line to oversharing or uh, using authenticity and transparency uh, as, as a tool that isn't or shouldn't be used in that kind of space? Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Um, you know, how do we really create those boundaries or set the, the rules on authenticity and transparency when we're sharing online? Yeah. And um it's really interesting. So like I used to do my homework on a typewriter. Like I feel like <laughs> I I'm, remember I those feel, days too. <laughs> right. And like delete was literally, it would erase the type. I yeah. mean, it, it, I feel so prehistoric saying that. Um, <laughs> but you know, so the beauty of our generation, um, the ones who kind of, um, stride millennial and gen X, yeah. you know, where, where, we have the gift of having experienced life without the online noise yeah. and experiencing life with it. Yes. So we have an easier time unplugging and detaching from that than millennials and the generations coming. Yeah. Now, social media is such a gift because it's allowed us to 
see and connect with what's actually going on in the world. You know, um, people say that millennials are way more compassionate and interested in the news. Well, it's because the news is at their fingertips. It's, it's not because we've all of a sudden become more compassionate and empathetic human beings. It's because we now have access to everything that's going on. Social media is also this, has brought along this curse, you know, comparisonitis is, yeah. um, rising and it's so easy to get caught up in scrolling and compare ourselves. And, and this is why, you know, authenticity and transparency, uh, we're attracted to it in the online space. Now to your specific question, like where do we draw the line? Um, so the other gift with social media is it's provided an outlet to those who felt like they never or previously didn't have an outlet. Yeah. You know, um, so it, it's kind of replaced the dear diary, mm. you know, the little diaries with the lock <laughs> keys. I used to have one of those. Um, it's replaced that and people are, are feeling or they're experiencing freedom of speech for the first time ever. And, and this goes for all generations. We're seeing it with Gen X, Gen Y, millennials. Like we're seeing it with so many people. In fact, sometimes it can feel like verbal vomit yeah. online yeah. because everyone's just kind of going at it. So for me, um, and, and this is a question that a lot of my clients come to me for too, is, is like, how much is too much? Yeah. Because yeah. you want to, in, in a world that is filled with people who seem to be yelling on top of each other to be heard, uh, what does it actually take to have your message hit the masses? Mm. And, and my answer is truth. You know, truth penetrates. Truth is the only thing that pierces straight through the noise and into someone because it creates a real connection. So as connected as we all are on Facebook, on Instagram, on all the different platforms, we are actually very disconnected as a society because yeah. everyone's glued yeah. to their screen. So yeah. when you read a post about someone sharing something very personal or, or being real, it, it creates that connection because now you have a point to connect with. You're like, oh, I have this in common with that person. So truth does penetrate. But at the same time, there's something, you know, called, I, I call it like emotional vomiting. When you're basically using the online space as a place to air your dirty laundry, um, people are forgetting to process, yeah. like processing your emotions is your responsibility. It's yeah. not all the people on Facebook. Yeah. It's your responsibility. Yeah. And the reason why people do this, and I want everyone to really pay attention to this, the reason why you do this is because you're seeking some sort of external validation mm. for what it is that you're going through. Yeah. And let me tell you, you will never find that validation online. Yeah. And despite the number of likes or comments or, or whatever it is, you will never find that sense of validation online. That sense of validation comes from within. So whatever it is that you're going through, Make sure you take that time and honor the space that you need to process it first. And then if you want to go ahead and share it online, do so, but do so from that grounded place versus that neediness place. Like yeah. I need you to see me and I need you to validate what I'm going through, <laughs> you know, instead, yeah. like when you come at it from the other side, you've gone through it. It's so much easier to then position it as like, here's what I've been going through and here's what I've learned. Yeah. So, and so that good. Is, yeah. Yeah. You know, for me, uh, the conversation that the, the way that we phrase it quite a bit on the podcast here is that we're looking for intimacy. And yet what social media for a lot of people does is it builds and breeds false intimacy without a sense of responsibility to mm. each other. And mm -hmm. I just think that, that uh, you know, our generation, that little pocket between Gen X and millennial, uh, uh, there is something special we have to offer. But sometimes I feel like our voice uh, for many of us feels more lost than millennials because they're talked about all the time or Gen Xers because they're on the forefront of people's mind. And, and we kind of get in this little buried where we have something special we have to offer to the world, a perspective that uh, not everyone has. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and I just want to see more people in our space, our age bracket, having that voice. Uh, I love that there is multiple names for this little pocket generation, but one of them is the chosen ones. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that 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 uh, sometimes we feel, and I don't know if it's been like this for you, but that uh, we don't really have a generation where we fit in. We're just kind of out on our own. Yeah, that's why I positioned it as we're kind of in between the Gen X yeah. and like the millennial. Like I never know how to refer to us because we are that 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 age that straddles both. But in that we have such 
a different perspective yeah. on life. Yeah. So, so good. Okay. So as we kind of wrap up this segment, how are you finding purpose in what you do? Yeah, that's such a great question. Uh, purpose is something that I, I align with intention. Mm. So for me, knowing why I'm doing everything and that goes, that doesn't just go for what I'm doing in the world. My big, great purpose. This goes for like, why am I on this podcast with you? Why do I choose to meditate in the morning? Why am I eating this? this lunch for why am I eating this for lunch? Like being ultra intentional with what I'm doing. That's how I find purpose because then now all of a sudden recording this podcast with you has purpose eating Mm. my lunch that has purpose doing a Facebook live that has purpose because I understand why I'm doing it. And it's so crucial, especially in today's day and age when people feel like they have to do things because they should be doing things. It's so important to stop and find purpose in everything. And you can find purpose in everything by asking yourself why. Love that. Now for you, uh, you are doing a lot of cool stuff. You're very busy. What's one challenge you're currently working to overcome in your business? Yeah. One of the challenges I'm, I'm currently looking to overcome is is asking for and seeking support. Yeah. I think it's it's really easy to to get stuck in the solopreneur mentality of like, I have to do everything on my own. And if I don't do it on my own, I'm a failure. Um, or the, the feeling of like, people don't support me. So for me, um, it's funny that we're talking about this right now because I literally just yesterday wrote down a declaration. I do Mm. these often in my journals. Like I wrote down, I said, from now until the end of November, November 30th, I will ask for and receive support every single day. Wow which is huge. You know, I'm, I'm someone who even saying that out loud makes me cringe. Um, it brings up a lot of emotion, but like if there's something that you know, isn't working for you, then you have the responsibility and the power to change it. So I'm determined to change this because I know by doing so, it'll just open up so much more for me and my business. Love that. What's your next big goal for what you have going on in your business? Uh, my next, I have so many, but my next real (laughs) big goal is I would love, I want to be on a different stage every month of 2019. Like that is my goal. I love speaking. I love, um, facilitating transformation in a live capacity. Uh, I love feeling people's energy. And so being on stage is so organic for me. And, and yeah, my goal for 2019 is to be on a different stage at least once a month. Yeah, that's super, super cool. In a moment, we'll be back with Ruby to talk more about thought leadership, authenticity, integrity, uh, her cool programs that she's doing, and her live event, Amplified Soul. We want to take a moment and thank our friends over at Floxy for supporting today's episode. Here's a little bit more about them. You have a killer idea for the perfect graphic or website but you feel stuck and overwhelmed by the cost and skills it takes to create those ideas. Maybe you lack the time you need to create them. No matter the obstacle, it's time to get that idea created. And our friends over at Floxy can help you create those killer graphics, the perfect website, or even create the copy that's used on your next ad, all at a low cost, starting at $349 per month. Their on-demand, unlimited graphic design, web, and copywriting are backed by a seven-day money-back guarantee for all new accounts. And you'll be working with a dedicated U.S.-based project manager assigned to your account. There are no hidden fees, and billing is month-to-month. So check them out for your next project, and for the project after that, too. You can find them at floxy.com, F-L-O-C-K-S-Y.com. Let them know that Jumblethink sent you. Now let's return to our conversation with Ruby. We are back with Ruby. Okay, Ruby, before we get rolling here, I want people to know how they can connect with you. So what is the best ways they can find you, connect with you, and start the conversation? Yeah. So I love social media for the social engagement. I am Mm. someone who actually responds to my PMs and DMs myself. (laughs) I don't have an assistant who does this. So please connect with me online. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at I am Ruby as well as Facebook at I am Ruby. And then of course you can head to my website to check out all the different things that I have available as well as connect with me there. And that's rubyframon.com. You should get the I am Ruby.com domain too. 
Yeah. So there's a German shepherd that's been <laughs> sitting on that domain for like the last four years. Wow. That's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a website for a German shepherd that's named funny. Ruby. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Well, I would not have guessed that. So. <laughs> I, one of the areas that you are uh, an expert in and are passionate about is thought leadership and mm -hmm. specifically raising up a new generation of thought leaders. Mm -hmm. For some people uh, listening, they probably have a perspective on thought leadership, what it is. Sometimes it's a little bit dirty because they feel like some of these gurus are, you know, the used car salesmen of personal help, self-help. And then you've got other people in that space that are uh, the Simon Sinek's and that kind of thing. But you have a unique uh, perspective on thought leadership and what makes a good thought leader. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So it's interesting. Like thought leader, the real definition is mm -hmm. someone whose views are on a subject are taken to be authoritative and influential. So it's someone who is seen as an influencer and they influence with their thoughts. Yeah. What I am more interested in, in terms of who I work with, are those who have a message that mm. is going to positively impact the world. And they do so by sharing their thoughts. Yeah. And I think that there's just a lot of people out there who are sitting on gold and not sharing their message for fear of, you know, an infinite different number of things. And so for me, I want to act as a catalyst so we can give rise to this army of voices, people who are really collectively going to come together and, and change the world with their message, with their voices, because our world right now is going through a lot of division. Like there's yeah. a lot happening in our world. I mean, in the United States alone, that is creating feelings of separation and, and division more than we've ever felt in generations. And so right now what is needed is, is people coming together to create change versus like people who just want to stand up individually and, 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 give their own praises on themselves. Like that's not what this is about. This yeah. is about people who are really dedicated to creating impact on this planet and its people by sharing their message, by sharing their story, by sharing their ideas, their thoughts, their opinions, um, and doing so from a place of, of sheer unapologeticness. You know, for me, I think of thought leadership and so often, uh, these are people who have lots of influence, like you mentioned, but a lot of times the motivation is ego or arrogance from the mm -hmm. standpoint of they come in and it's like all about them. They're the guru. They're the hero. They're the thought leader. And so many of these uh, voices on YouTube or uh, on some of the stages that, that we see at events, that's the point of view they're coming from. But what I'm hearing you say is that, that the people that you want to work with are realizing that thought leadership is not about them, but it's about the message. Yes. And it changes the perspective in which they speak from and the message of how they share it. Is that right? Yes, it's a thousand percent. And it's not to say that I don't work with the others. I work with the others <laughs> too to help them come from it. Right. Uh, from a place that is bigger than them. Because if you're, if you're going about your purpose or your mission or your vision from a place that is just about you, you are only going to get so far. Yeah. If you're really desiring to create impact in your life and in, in the world and in, in those, the lives of those around you, then you have to understand that this is so much bigger than you. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So for you, you're meeting with people, you're deciding, hey, are they a good fit to work with me? Am I a good fit to work with them? One of the things that I know about you from our conversations is that you're a person of substance and uh, significance. So how do you filter through uh, people that you want to invest in and, and be able to pull the gold out of them so that they can offer that to the world? Yeah. Number one is they have to be willing. Mm. You know, if, if, if someone comes to me with walls that, that I cannot even penetrate through, then that's just not the right fit. Then, yeah. then what they are is people who are seeking answers they're seeking a, a quick fix or a strategy or something that's going to allow them to do whatever it is that they want to do. And that's, that's not, that's not what I do at all. Um, so it's that wall. And then people who are willing to be real. You know, mm. it's so important to me for, for clients to 
have that willingness to just like drop the mask, <laughs> you know, just yeah, drop yeah. it, even if it's just in this session or just in the program or just in the weekend intensive, like just drop the mask and be willing to be open. And then third is like, they really have a vision for themselves. Um, there's a lot of people that are very busy running away from what they don't want. What I'm interested in is those who are running towards something. Mm, I love that. So often we are fighting, um, uh, on the wrong playing field mm -hmm. uh, for what we value. And we're getting caught up in the noise of, uh, whether it's agenda, whether it's, uh, the loudest voice and just trying to keep up with them. And I love moving the move, uh, the, the message, moving the story into a place that says, you know what, we're not even going to play in this field. We're going to create and paint a new story. When you're working with thought leaders, uh, it, there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, I'm sure. And I, I don't even know what that looks like completely for you, but I'm sure some of that is helping them find healing and wholeness for themselves. So I'm sure some of that is helping them uh, find their message and others is part of it is probably helping them craft their message. Yeah. I mean, it, it's kind of like I always say I'm the coach they go to when mm. they've worked with all the business coaches and the strategy coaches and nothing's working. Yeah. Because this is so much deeper than business and strategy. This yeah. is you. You are the foundation for your message and everything that you're doing. And yeah. you're the foundation of your business. Yeah. So we got to get your foundation in check. So good. How can people start finding their message? Because I think some people just go, uh, I'm just a beautifully broken person that's pretty messed up and I have a lot of heart hurt I have a lot of good things happening I'm working through that but coming back to that worthiness that we talked in the first segment how can they start saying now this is my message that the world needs from me yeah I would say start looking at your story start looking at your mess because your mess is your message mm. there there is something in your story that is your message there is a reoccurring theme something that you've been you know, working on, on learning and improving. And I can almost guarantee for most people that becomes their message. I love that. Your mess is your message. I, that's, mm -hmm. that's a powerful, powerful statement right there. What gets you most excited as you're working with people? Uh, when do you just go, Oh, they're getting it. And I am so excited about that journey. When, maybe there's just some stories about that. Yeah. It's the moment that, um, it, there's two moments. One is when they have that brain explosion where, where they finally land on on something, you know, and you see them kind of look up in the sky and go, huh. <laughs> like to me, I'm like, OK, something's shifting inside them. Yeah. And the second is when the they start receiving opportunities that they never once thought was possible. You know, wow. I have a, a client who within um, 14 months of working with me, she wasn't, I mean, she had never spoken, not even done, um, wow. like a, a Facebook live and she was featured in four newspapers and now <laughs> is speaking in front of a crowd of 500 about her story and her message and, and, um, how she's sharing that with the world. So that to me feels so exciting when they, they receive opportunities like that, because it's just, it's, you know, this validation of like, here, see, this is your purpose in action. <laughs> and, and sometimes people need to actually see that, that come to them, the opportunity for that, for it to really resonate and land in their being for them to say, Oh yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do. Okay. So we talked about what thought leadership is. I know mm -hmm. that for you, you talk about authenticity and integrity are so critical for that. Mm -hmm. When you're looking at these thought leaders that are out there, Maybe some of them are the noisiest ones. Some of those people are obscure, and yet their 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 leadership is impacting many. Mm -hmm. What are the traits you're looking for beyond the message? When you look at the individual and you say, that's a person I want to learn from. That's a person I want to grow from. That's a person that I want to impact my life. Because for you, uh, it seems like you're very focused on the things that you bring into your life, that you don't taint uh, or... or or muddy those waters for yourself. So how do you quantify uh, thought leaders that have significance? Yeah, that is such a great question. I actually um, have what I call the 18 traits of a thought leader. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, which is which is going to be included in, in my book once I get my book deal. Yeah. Um, but, you know, authenticity and integrity are so, so big for me. And what that looks like is 
um, people who are bold. Mm. And when I say bold, this doesn't mean really loud. What this means is you're willing to show up as you are in all that you are. Mm. You know, we see people who try and be like the other leaders, like eh, maybe you don't talk with your hands on stage, but you're going to talk with your hands on stage because <laughs> you saw so-and-so do it, you know, yeah, like, yeah. so be bold in your own way. Um, people who are really courageous, mm. um, so courageous enough to speak the truth, courageous enough to use their voice and share their opinions. Um, and also, you know, people who are passionate. So you got to have like passion and fire for what it is that you're doing because passion is so contagious yeah. and, you know, let, let's get, just get real. Like thought leadership is also about the community that you build around you, right? Because this is about getting people to buy into your ideas and, um, your opinions. Um, so that takes passion and, and inspiration, um, and the other thing that's really big for me is intentional, like mm. being intentional with everything you're doing. You're not just throwing stuff out into the universe and, and being really random with everything. Like you're actually uber intentional about everything that you're doing because that intention is, is felt. Yeah. I love that. Intentional, intentional decisions, intentional lifestyle. Uh, I, I think in a lot of ways, that's the magic sauce for a lot of people that mm -hmm. they're so scattered or they're doing all these different things. Or they don't have a focus, uh, and or, or simply they're just not intentionally focused on what they're doing. Um, how can they really hyper focus and become more intentional? Yeah, so I have this exercise that um, <clears throat> people who come to Amplified Soul Live we always do this, but I also have all my clients do it. Well, and well, it's... Well, uh, let's stop there. Oh, Amplified yeah. Soul. We haven't really talked about that. What is it? No. So people know this is a great time yeah. to ask that. <laughs> yeah, Amplified Soul Live is my three day event to help you amplify your presence, your influence, and your impact. It is the only event that is offered that is specifically for thought leaders mm. to really rise up and have their messages <clears throat> heard. So it's an amazing, incredible three days. It's so much more than just business strategy. It's a lot of somatic work. It's a lot of work on yourself and becoming who you need to be to bring your message out there. Um, so that next one takes place in February in Los Angeles. Um, so if you live in a place that has an actual winter, it's a great escape. <laughs> 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 but um, if if you're really looking to be seen and be recognized as a sought out sought after expert in your industry, and you're seeking a community of like minds, like this is the place where you want to be. Wow, such a cool event. Yeah. Sorry, we kind of broke off there mid sentence about uh, the exercise about yeah. being more intentional. So let's jump back there for a second. Yeah, for sure. So you want to take a piece of paper and you're just going to draw a line right through the center. Mm. And at the top of each column, you're going to write in one column aligned and the other column not aligned. Mm. And so you're going to list out everything that you're doing. Um, let's, let's use this exercise for business. So you're going to list out everything that you're doing in your business and you're going to put them in one of, of either of the columns. And when something is aligned, that means it's aligned with what you value most. Mm. Um, when, and also the vision that you're heading towards, like, what is it, where is it that you're heading? Um, so you get to, um, categorize these things, everything that you're doing in your business, whether it's like a Facebook live or writing for articles or like to have this product or leading this group, whatever it is, like start putting them in the different buckets of aligned and not aligned. And then you have this visual representation of like, here's all the stuff that you're wasting your time on that's actually not aligned with your values, nor is it aligned with where you're going. And you'd be surprised. Like wow. people are literally shocked when they do this. It sounds like such a simple thing. But <laughs> when you actually break down everything that you're doing and under and and really see like this is the stuff that's leading me to where I want to be. And this is the stuff that's kind of just keeping me stuck or it's just stuff that I'm doing to keep myself busy if you get do away with all the stuff that is not aligned and just focus on the stuff that is aligned, it will get you to where you want to be so much quicker and you become so much more intentional in everything that you're doing. I love that. Um, I'm going through that right now with my own business and, and processing that so I can relate to that. I think it's a great exercise and love, love that. Before we wrap up this segment, how can people find you and connect with you again? 
Yeah. So hit me up on social media at I am Ruby everywhere. You could just Google it. I'll pop up. And then my website, rubyframon.com. You can access information for my event on the website, as well as my trainings. I have paid trainings and free trainings that are available for you. We'll be right back with Ruby and go into our rapid fire questions. Today's episode is being sponsored by OpportunityInChina.com. Here's a little bit more about what they are doing. Have you been looking for a way to change your career or social prospects? Do you see the world around you changing and haven't quite figured out what path to take? You are not alone in seeking opportunity. Visit OpportunityInChina.com for access to scholarships to attend university in China or... If you have a bachelor's degree already, OpportunityInChina.com provides access to jobs in the educational sector all across China. Working in China is not only often well paid, but it will place you among one fifth of the world's population, boosting your social network, bringing you more deeply into the story of globalization and opening doors you never knew existed. So seize your opportunity now. Visit their website at OpportunityInChina.com. By the way, they have a great podcast. Make sure you search for Opportunity in China podcast wherever you like to listen to your podcasts. Now let's jump into rapid fire questions with Ruby. We are back with Ruby for rapid fire questions. Are you ready for rapid fire questions? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> <laughs> what is one tip you'd give someone with a big idea or dream and they don't know where to start? Start anywhere. Love that. What's one change you'd like to see in the world? More compassion. Uh, so good. What do you want your legacy to be? A voice catalyst. Mm. Where do you find inspiration? Mm, in, in everyone around me. What is one book you think every dreamer and entrepreneur should read and Why? The four agreements, because it'll help you become who you need to be in order to fulfill what it is that you want to fulfill. Now, our next question is a wild card question. I, I have two questions because I think you are on the pulse of, of culture and society and uh, know what's going on. I'm going to ask you the second question, which is what is one trend you are currently excited about? Mm, I am excited about um, the rise of video. Now, video has been around for a few years, don't get me wrong, but there <laughs> is so much more happening with the our ability to get our videos. Out. We can get our videos out on OTT, like on, on digital networks like yeah. Netflix. Like All of this stuff is so accessible to us. So I'm really excited about that because it, it means that you can now amplify your message in bigger ways. What is one habit that you find helpful in your life as an entrepreneur? Meditation. How do you start and finish your day? With my husband, phones off. <laughs> I love that. So good. So good. If you weren't doing what you're doing today, what do you think you'd be doing? If I wasn't doing what I'm doing today, um, I, I would be... Hmm. That's a great question. I've never even thought about that. What would I be doing? I would still be empowering, um, people in some way, shape or form as either a teacher or a guide. Okay. Yeah. 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 And our final rapid fire question is what is one dream you are still wanting to fulfill in your own life? Hmm. One dream that I'm still wanting to fulfill in my own life is having two big exotic trips per year. Oh, cool. I love that. That's <laughs> I love awesome. Traveling. <laughs> That's so cool. As we wrap up today's episode, we always like to leave a moment where you can give a final thought for us. So what's your final thought for us listening today? My final thought is what Whatever it is that you are looking to create in the world, it must first be created within you. Mm, that's good. Ruby, as we uh, wrap up today's episode, I want to thank you for taking time out. You know, when I think about you, I think of uh, joy-filled. 
that's that's what I think of when I think of Ruby. And I just want to thank you for sharing your story with us and and how you got there and also the wisdom of what you do. So thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure to be on on here with you. And you asked some great questions. Once again, we want to thank today's guest, Ruby Freeman, for taking time out, sharing her story, and giving us insights into the world of thought leadership, finding your worth and value. Make sure you check out her links. They're in the episode notes if you want to connect more with her. We also want to thank our sponsors for today's episode, OpportunityInChina.com and Floxy. Go support them. They support the podcast, and they're doing cool stuff that will help you in your journey of chasing big ideas and dreams, too. I want to encourage you, it's your turn now. If you have big ideas and dreams, there is no better time to start than today. You don't have to start big. You don't have to do something epic right now. All you have to do is take a small step and move that dream and idea one step closer to reality. So get out there, chase those dreams and ideas, and change the world around you. En avant, en arrière, sur les côtés. Vous êtes une autre personne. Les mères de famille, les enfants, peuvent également prendre un moment revitalisant. Dans quelques mois, lorsque vous aurez bien saisi la technique et que vous serez maître de votre corps, vous pourrez vous décontracter même en travaillant.